Hello everyone and happy Friday. We are going to try a couple new things in terms of videos with our YouTube channel for Fossil Project. So introducing our first installment of what will probably be every other week of Fossil Reports. So every week our intern Sam and MJ come up with a long list of articles that we use in our social media accounts to report on. And sadly not all of those make it into our social media feed just because of scheduling or there is just a lot of stuff. And because we recently had winter break, there has been a lot of articles that we didn't really get to cover uh, that have come out, uh, but we felt that need to be talked about. So with that being said, we are going to get into old events that are current now. So today we're going to just be covering about six stories, uh, but in the future we hope to only do about three or so. So this will be a longer episode than normal. And to start off, we have two new occurrences of two separate genera of peccaries from the gray fossil site. Now for those of you who do not know, the Gray Fossil Site is a paleontological site in northeastern Tennessee that dates back to about 4.9 to 4.7 million years ago and is one of the only fossil sites in the southeast of this age. Now paleontologists have been pulling out peccary fossils for quite some time down at the Gray Fossil Site. However, it wasn't until recently that the determination for the species have been made. And it turns out that these are the first two occurrences of these species in the Appalachian region. Now we turn to northeastern India where there is now the first occurrence of an Asian Dioscoria. Now the Dioscoriaceae, or yam family, is a tropical to subtropical plant family and is part of the monocots like grasses and palms. So these are not sweet potatoes because sweet potatoes are actually eudicots and are in their own family called the Convolvulaceae. Now this fossil is from the early Eocene, so about 55 to 40 million years ago. What makes this fossil significant is not only is it the first found in Asia, but also the region where it was found today is dry. Now, Dioscoria comes from tropical environments. So we know back in the Eocene, it was a lot wetter than it is today. Moving on to the UK, a new paper by O'Sullivan and Martill redescribed pterosaurs from the Great Oolite Group. And the Great Oolite Group is Jurassic in age ranging from 168 to 166 million years ago. So this article has received some press for describing a new species known as Clobiodon rochii. However, this paper goes a lot further. In fact, what it does is it actually gets rid of an old genus because the skull that was used to describe the genus was actually a crocodile skull. And turns out that instead of three species of pterosaur being from this group, there are actually five, at least five distinct pterosaur morphotypes. So while the authors acknowledge that this is not a place of high pterosaur diversity, the paper does highlight the fact that a lot of taxonomic revision had to be done on this. And I feel like that's something that has been left out of a lot of more popular media reports on this article, is that it's more than just a new species, is that the taxonomy of this area has been reviewed and it turns out that things were not as we thought. So staying in Europe, but moving on to Russia, we have a new sauropod dinosaur known as Volga Titan, named after the Volga River. This sauropod is Hotterivian in age, meaning it's about 133 to 139 million years ago. And it is part of a group of sauropods known as the Lithostrotian Titanosaurs. Cladistic analyses show that this fossil is sister to the Logentosauria, uh, which includes the Argentinosaurus. Now this find is important for a couple of reasons. So first, the Logentosauria and that whole clade is today only found in South America. So this is its first occurrence in a place outside of South America. Secondly, it is the oldest member of that clade. And finally, this is actually the first dinosaur found on the European side of Russia. So the authors conclude that this group of massive sauropods actually probably had a larger geographic range in the early Cretaceous. Now we go back to fossil plants, which makes me really excited. So in the country of Jordan, a new assemblage of Permian age fossil plants has been discovered. These fossils are late Permian in age, making them about 254 to 252 million years old. And the paper by Blom and Kepper and colleagues highlights that this site contains three of the earliest occurrences 
for three different gymnosperm groups. The first being the Benetotales, which we should have a graphic up here. This is not from Jordan. And the Benetotales are a group of gymnosperm plants that are thought to have led on to the angiosperms, or the flowering plants. Secondly, we have the oldest occurrence of the genus Dicroidium, which is a plant in the seed ferns. So seed ferns are not true ferns because they produce seeds as opposed to spores like ferns do. And finally, the oldest occurrence of the extant family, Podocarpaceae. For those of you scratching your head, what is Podocarpaceae? Podocarpaceae is a family of trees that resembles you, not you as a person, but you as the tree, Y-E-W, and today grows mainly in the Southern Hemisphere. And last, but certainly not least for our teaching audience, Dr. Lucy Chang will be giving a Science How through the Smithsonian on ammonites. Now, for those of you not familiar with Science How, Science How is an extension program set up by the, by the Smithsonian for educators to connect with a scientist in their classroom. It is usually designed for grades three to five, but it can also work anywhere from grades two to eight. And there are activity sheets that are available with each speaker. Now the date is currently to be determined, but we will have a link in the description below that you can follow in order to figure out when it might be once that date is decided. So that is it for our show today. Next time will be a little bit shorter. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. If there are any articles that you want us to talk about, leave those in the comments section below. If there's any sort of series that you want to see us do instead, let us know in the comment section below as well. Be sure to check us out on all of our social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as our website at www.myfossil.org. And also our app is now out. It is available both on Android and iOS, free to download, Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Doesn't matter if you've been in paleontology your whole life or you're just getting into it. There is something on there for everyone. Anything from paleo art to fossils. You can ask questions about how to do stuff. People will respond to you. It's wonderful. Go download it. And that is it for today. Bye!